Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Big Bros Podcast. My name is Ilan, and I am joined by my lovely friend and comrade, Jeremy. How are we? I'm well, mate. How are you going? Good, good. I can't complain. It's a sunny, beautiful day here on the grand final weekend here in Melbourne. Who do you have tomorrow, Fitzroy or South Melbourne? Yeah, I'm hoping for the Fitzroy Lions as we are refer to them in their original formatted name and I think it's disrespectful to call them anything else I mean you got to stick to the roots of what they truly are so it's Fitzroy in South Melbourne otherwise known as the Brisbane Lions and the Sydney Swans facing and I mean the results will already be known at the time of the release when you guys are listening but um, what's your tip let's do a quick tip and see if we're like right well, yeah, look, I'm hoping for a Lions victory and I'm going to say I'm going to say Lions by 8 points with the Norm Smith medal going to Callum Archie. Okay. I think Swans win by 12 points with your Norm actually 13 points, just a bit more specific. And I think Norm Smith will be Isaac Haney. There we go, guys. So You've heard it here first and um You'll know the result at the time of listening to this, and we'll see which one is more accurate. Perfect. What are we speaking about today? Today, let's dive in. So we want to talk about dating with the intention of marriage. Should we be doing it with the intention of marriage? Is it a matter of maybe at a certain age, do you start focusing on these things a little bit more? Or should you always be focusing on marriage when entering the dating pool, the dating game? What do you reckon? I find this conversation so fascinating because historically, if I wanted to get married to you, Jeremy, and you were a female, (laughs) my dad would speak to your dad and we'd be speaking about what kind of land swap we can organize. How many... Or how many cattle am I worth? Correct. And love was way more of a financial transaction than it was an emotional transaction. Far from the truth now though. Correct. And for better and for worse, I'd say for much better, uh, love is now more of the predetermined factor albeit love is an action verb, as I like to think of it. But in general, nowadays, we, th- we think more with our heart more than with our head generally when you're, picking, when you're picking your life partner. You're not getting your parents to pick who your future partner will be. Now, albeit, some, albeit some yes, religions do still. In India, they still have a huge emphasis on arranged marriages. In some religious communities, there's still an emphasis on arranged marriages. And, you know, the person who you first date will be the person you start who you'll end up with. And I find it also interesting in some kind of like religions, like in Christianity, for example, you won't sleep with your partner until you're married. So all the physical aspects are completely reserved until you stand at the altar and sign the contract for life. And I know in Judaism as well, not being able to touch the partner at all. In the Yeah, in, in the most religious of In the, the most sects. religious of yeah. religious sex. So I find it very, very interesting how kind of marriage has evolved in some contexts, but not in others. But if we're arguing and we're debating or even discussing whether one should date only for the purpose of marriage, there's a few kind of discussion points we want to touch on. And I think my first question to you is, do you think that most people should implement a date to marry, a date to marry mentality? I think at a certain age, yes. At a certain age, you do need to employ a date to marriage type of intention. If, of course, that's something you want. Because, you know, not everyone wants to get married. Not everyone wants to have kids. And that's totally fine as long as you make that clear with the person that you are on dates with. But let's assume for the purpose of this that, you know, for for the people that are listening today, if, you know, you are maybe in your your mid-20s listening and you want to be dating and you're wondering whether you should be dating for marriage, my answer is probably yes if you know that that's something that you do want in the near future. And by near future, I'm saying, you know, let's say within the next five to 10 years because I feel like that's probably something that I would want. That's something that you would want. So look, I'm just assuming that that's what um, some people would want if they're listening as well. But you know, if you're listening and you don't want that, you just want to be dating for the sake of it. Marriage isn't on the cards for you. You don't want marriage. You don't want kids. Totally fine. As long as that's made clear with the person that you're going on dates with, because there's nothing worse than falling into the trap of going on dates with someone, forming this beautiful connection and your intentions are not made clear. Now, when it comes to dating for marriage, the reason why I think age is an important 
an important characteristic of the topic is because when you're just starting out dating, you're 17, 18, 19 years old, you're just getting a feel for what it is, for, for what you actually want. You don't really know what you want yet. So how can you really say that you're dating for the purpose of marriage at such a young age when you might not even know what marriage entails for you, what the char- characteristics of someone that you want to marry kind of looks like? You need to get an understanding of what those values are first, what those traits are that you're looking for in a person. And I think you kind of get an understanding of that by just putting yourself out there and and dating different people and forming connections with different people at a young age. And therefore, you're able to kind of sift through the traits that are important for you, the traits that are least important for you. And you start to get a better understanding of what you want going into like your 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 mid 20s. It's a very much the case of try before you buy, isn't it? Because you're right. We don't really know what we want when we're 18, 19. I think most people are just happy to have a partner, to have that rite of passage completed. And there might not be much focus on whether that's the person you want to end up with. I would argue it's beneficial in a lot of ways if your first partner isn't the one you end up with because you learn so much and if you're in a relationship from 17, 18 and that's the person you marry and you know you're happy and fulfilled that's awesome that's great that's fantastic but that's not usually the case for a lot of people and that's rare and it's rare but it's rare because you know people grow apart people want to explore other things with outside the confounds of a relationship and that's fine so i think in a lot of ways you shouldn't i think there's more benefit to be accrued generally speaking if you break up with your first partner because it might feel like that's the worst breakup that you'll ever go through and you know it's the first love it's the love that you know It's the puppy love, correct? And in doing so, by tearing that apart, it's a very upsetting thing. But for anyone who's listening to this and has potentially has gone through this sort of experience, there is so much opportunity at your hand right now because you can actually explore yourself, you can develop yourself into a person. And as you said, you can actually identify the values that you'd want. And perhaps you don't even want to date. Maybe maybe you just want to be single for a while and that's okay. But I think I, 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 what I kind of resonate with what you said is if you do and you are looking to wanting to get married at some point, there is an age where you should probably start shifting your focus with more intention. And the thing is, dating with intention is something that we speak about quite a lot. And dating with intention doesn't necessarily mean that the person you're seeing has to be your the future mother or the future father of your children. But what it does mean is that you know what you want and there's no gray area. Absolutely. And that's where dating with intention means, like even if it's dating with the purpose of wanting to just be a bit casual and, you know, date a few people. And, you know, if you really want to be polyamorous for, for, for your liking, like if like, that's okay. As long as it's verbalized, as long as the intention is known to the person. Cause I think dating with the ten- intention often gets misconstrued with the concept of dating with the purpose of marriage, with the purpose of long-term. I believe you can date with intention for many different intentions and purposes as long as that's just communicated and verbalized to the person, because that's when you save yourself from getting into hot water. You mentioned a, you mentioned the fact of you know childhood sweethearts and you know childhood lovers and that then forming into marriages and long term relationships, which does happen, albeit quite rare. Beautiful love stories, beautiful fairy tales. I do, however, have the belief though that I think it is important to at least have some stage in your life where you are single, even if it's for a time period, even if it's for a matter of a couple of months, but being in the scene, talking to people, trying to form connections with people, just getting used to being around an environment of different people without someone partnering up with you at your hip. Because I feel like when we look at a lot of these relationships that might have started at a really young age at 17 18 and you know maybe they've dated for like five six years they come out of a relationship at about 24 25 years old they often seem like they maybe might lack a lot of those social skills when out and about in group settings and i feel like a lot of it is to do with just always having someone attached at your hip and therefore not needing to actually Get a little bit uncomfortable in social settings. Put yourself out there. Try talk to different people that you've never spoken to. 
So I feel like having some form of a single stage and a single stage doesn't mean sleeping around and hoeing around and, you know, trying to kiss everything under the sun. That's not what we mean by single stage, but just a stage in your life where you have actually needed to put yourself out there, put yourself in situations where you're forced to talk to people, you're forced to feel a bit uncomfortable without the, without the aura and comfort and warmth of someone always being attached to you because I feel like that's a very comfortable feel a comfortable thing to feel and you know I feel like as part of just being a human and growing up you need to have a bit of sense of independence about you which can be masked by always maybe being in a relationship yeah that's an interesting idea you bring up there because a lot of times you might lose that independence if you get into a relationship when you're 17 and 18 and you're not actually used to having a sense of self perhaps you identify your sense of self in close association with your partner and you know it's easy when you're still in your formative years but you're right once you get out of that relationship you might be in a bit of an identity crisis because for so long who you associated yourself with was in close contact with your partner and they formed so much of your identity I would also argue kind of as a devil's advocate point that, you know, there's a lot of people that are in really long-term relationships that may have started when they were 17 or 18. It works for people, of course it does. But I reckon the ones that work, and I think the ones that work really effectively, and they're the ones that you hear beautiful love stories about, they're the ones who were never codependent. Yes. They're the ones who always had and developed a sense of self outside of the context of their relationship. Social butterflies. Correct. And I think they were able to develop themselves so well outside the context of the relationship that they were able to come back inside and be present themselves as the most beautiful versions of who they were. And I think that's usually the link that I, you know, would say from anecdotal evidence that would suggest that those who are most successful in those first year relationships, like the first couple of relationships, like the ones that would get into when they're 17, 18, it's that sense of independence that I think would differentiate them. Just a kind of side point, I was thinking about this before as well. In, the, in society, there's this massive pressure to get married, but I don't think marriage is for everyone. And I think for a lot of people, As people who can't stay monogamous for whatever reason, they want to be in, you know, nowadays it's called serial monogamy. So the idea is that, you know, you're going to be with one partner, but that partner is not necessarily going to be the partner you end up with. So you won't have multiple girlfriends, but there's certain people who can't maintain that. And that's okay. And I don't think that marriage personally is for everyone. And I don't think we should shame anyone if they pursue an alternative lifestyle that doesn't necessarily conform to society's ideals of marriage. Would you agree? I would agree. And that's why, you know, I mentioned before that no matter your intention, as long as you verbalize it, whether you want to be monogamous, whether you want to be polyamorous, whatever it is, as long as you know that. But I think, yeah, marriage isn't for everyone, but I think it's also, I think it's also not made, I think it's also made harder by our society today and the way in which we live and the way in which connections are formed and what i mean by that is you know i'm referring to the dating apps here i'm referring to the nature of instagram the nature of social media it is so easy now to make a connection with seriously anyone you want i mean you can message anyone at any point in time from anywhere in the world it's made that easy with the nature of dating apps as well i mean if you're not happy with one person or you get bored of one person you can just swipe and and message someone else. So it doesn't, the way in which the world is today, I feel like it doesn't actually teach us to to nurture those monogamous relationships, to nurture being with just a one person and growing that. And I think that's a pretty pretty sad thing. I mean, I think there's a lot of beauty in, in love and, and monogamy and the fact that we are now in a world where that is being challenged is is a bit of a shame in my opinion albeit does suit a lot of people as well but I think you know if you're coming from the standpoint of you know dating with the intention of getting married dating with the intention of trying to put your eggs in the basket of just the one person and really trying to nurture that god it's made a lot harder today as well oh I'm sure it is you've got uh, paralysis of choice nowadays because nowadays I think um, a lot of relationships Uh, discontinued because knowing that you can if you don't like one specific quality about someone you could just go to someone else and hopefully that they will correct for that quality imperfection that you saw in your previous relationship and I think that for in a lot of ways it's a two-sided coin because on one hand you know that even if you're 
in a really terrible relationship and it's not fulfilling you and you're generally unhappy, you know that there's other options. And that's a great thing. That's a comforting feeling to know that you don't necessarily need to be stuck with this one person. But by the same token, every time there's an issue, you've got to ask yourself, is this a fundamental issue of incompatibility that might threaten the long-term longevity of our relationship? Or is it something that requires both of us to come to the table and work on together in a collaborative fashion? My suspicion is we're still trading out nowadays the latter for a new relationship and you'll end up in the same predicament as you were in that previous relationship because you're still going to be finding imperfections but if you don't have the discipline to want to work on those kind of uh, issues in the relationship context that isn't necessarily fundamental to the longevity of the relationship you run the risk of repeating the same problem it's the whole idea of history repeating itself so I think understanding if you want to go for marriage and that's your philosophy when it comes to dating you also have to understand what comes with that as well and I think there's a few things you should keep in mind it's that dating and being monogamous is going to be challenging at times, not necessarily that you want to necessarily, you know, step out of the relationship or anything like that, but literally being with one person when the honeymoon phase finishes, that requires a lot of work and it requires you to actually choose to show up for them every day. And I believe if you have a full understanding of that, that'll only be to your betterment. But I don't think that everyone has that mentality. And I think if you know that you're someone who might be too easy to jump ship, then you might also want to reevaluate whether long-term monogamy or marriage is something for you. And if it's not, that's fine. Mm. You don't necessarily need to conform to society's standards. But I think it just starts with knowing what you want. Say there's a 24, 25-year-old listening to this right now and you know they're at the stage where they really want to you know, find someone that they can hopefully spend the rest of their life with and they want to date with intention. Do you think, w- with the intention of marriage that is, do you think it's too early to start proposing these questions about marriage, about kids in the early first date, second date, third date with the person that they are on a date with? Not at all. And I think it depends how you phrase it. We spoke about this concept a few weeks ago in Mastering the Talking Stage episode. Uh, Link is in our bio. But with regards to that question, I think there's nothing wrong with on a first date just explaining what you want. You're not necessarily saying to that person you want it with them, but it's like a job It's like a job position that becomes open. It's a vacant position. And in that job vacancy position, it outlines and details all the roles and responsibilities. Now, it's in a similar way a sort of thing, which is as a person you're explaining, I want a long-term relationship that will lead to marriage and kids. This is my goal and that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for anything casual. I'm not looking for anything you know, non-direct I want this and if you're someone that you know that potentially is interested in the same thing and we are compatible maybe we can you know see where this goes now you're not setting up any pressure but what you are doing is you're filtering out all the other people that aren't going to be able to uh, meet you with those needs and I think that's fine right it's like if I'm if I'm if I'm advertising a job position uh, for, you know, an electrical engineer, I'm not going to go and hire a mathematician or actually I might because mathematicians <laughs> are quite useful, but I'm not going to go and hire necessarily a lawyer or a doctor for that position, right? You're going to be filtering out the people who aren't suited for that position in the same way you'd be filtering out and dating the people who don't have the same long-term vision as you. I think a lot of people get scared that all of this chit chat when you're maybe in the early stages of dating is in quotations coming on too hard or being too forward too early on. But I think, you know, we've we've put it there that it's it's not coming on too hard. It's not being too forward. And the reason in which it's not that is because like you said, you're not saying that you want this with this person. Correct. You're just saying this is the intention, this is what you want. And it, you know, it might be with this person, but this is just what you want overall. So that that allows the person to feel a little bit of ease and not feel like you're coming on hard to them. But these are just your intentions. And I feel like if someone was to feel a bit taken aback by hearing that, then they're probably just not the right one for you and that's okay. I completely agree. And I think you have to also understand it's such a display of confidence. You're pretty much showcasing to this person that you're confident enough to communicate what you want and you're comfortable with knowing that the person you're sitting next to is someone you don't need to necessarily impress. You're not changing what you want to in order to try and impress them, but rather you're telling them what you want and you're remaining authentic to yourself to such a point that even if you're not compatible, you run the risk of that person walking away from you. 
you, but you don't care because you've already outlined what you want. And I think that's the ultimate display of confidence, authenticity, and guess what? That's going to be mostly attractive to most people. And another great thing there is is that you also chip away at all the bullshit as well, I think early on. When you're really straight-edged about what you want and someone else is really straight-edged about what you want, you can kind of you almost like extract away the small talk that you would often see on those first few dates. Now, it's not to say that you're going to rush and move in with this person, but what it is saying is that you know that there's more potential with this person. You're not leaving that first date being like, I don't know what you know their intentions are in life right now. You have a way clearer understanding of their direction and that's what I think you want to have after a first date. You don't want to be asking yourself whether the person you just spoke to, you know, is kind of differential to you in terms of what their life trajectory is because you're you're navigating so many things when you start seeing someone, right? So I feel like you're just allowing yourself an easier second and third date by just getting, you know, on the same page as early as quick as quickly as possible. They are by far the best dates that I guess I can recall is yeah, walking away from it knowing that your intentions are, you know, pretty similar or at least that you have expressed your intentions because they might not have expressed their intentions that clearly and eloquently on the first date, the second date. And and that's okay. That might take a little bit of warming up for them to do. But walking away from a date knowing that you have expressed yours, gee, it, it allows you to, yeah, like just settle into the hopefully next upcoming dates knowing that, you know, you have actually just laid everything on the table and you could just enjoy yourself. You don't have this mask up. You don't have these walls up. And you can just be and enjoy being. And it's by far the best thing. And it's probably something that I only got better at, I guess, verbalizing and communicating as I got into like my, my mid-20s. You know, I'm 24 now. So I'd say around the last couple of years, only getting better at that. And I feel like coming back to this, you know, I probably wasn't as good at it in my early 20s. And, you know, it's probably from a, a mix of different experiences probably also just, you know, that fear of, you know, expressing your intentions and, you know, the fear of getting hurt or the fear of not having the same intentions as the person you're with. But funny story that I remember very, very early on, I was probably like 19 at the time. And, you know, I went on, went on a few dates with, with this girl at the time, and it might've been like three or four dates. And I remember eventually, you know, ending things and, and calling it and, my reasoning was that I feel like our values didn't align because at that stage I was, you know, looking to to date someone that, you know, I could see myself like being with long term. Now, I didn't mention the words marriage. Um, I was, you know, like I said, only around 19, 20 at the time. Um, but, you know, just expressing that I was, I was dating with the mindset of being long term was enough for me to receive a reaction from this person that was quite adverse and quite surprising in a way. I mean, they they didn't take it well and that's okay, but their their mindset was, why do you feel like you need a date long-term at such a young age, at like 19, 20 years old? Why are you already thinking about dating long-term? Wouldn't you just want to go with the flow and enjoy your time with the person that you're now with and just enjoy being in the moment. And, you know, it's very fair for someone to think like that, to just think in the present moment, just enjoy being in the present moment and see where it takes you. But with that being said, whilst I did see her perspective, I still felt very strongly about my perspective. And I feel like my perspective is the one that I would still only encourage people to take because I feel like if you deep down know that you know there might be values here that you guys are just not aligning up on and that's completely okay be it religious values be it moral values whatever it is but if you know that there's something there that is just a little bit different and you know that it it will affect you long term and you know that this isn't the type of person that you would want to enter a long term relationship with or marriage stick to that absolutely stick to that because if you were to just go with the flow like this person suggested and stay in the present moment and just keep flowing with each other, it will eventually reach the point where those values that you know deep down that are important to you, they will continue to come closer and closer to the surface and 
you are then putting an expiry date on your relationship with this person and you are only going to make it harder for them and for you when you do have to call it off when you're left with no choice but to call it off because you've reached this point so far down the line where these core values that you stick to and and and, and you value so strongly they come to the surface and you're left with no choice. Now imagine it's four or five years into dating that person and they're potentially oh. wanting engagement from you and you're looking for something serious, but you've gone with the flow to such an extent that you've discarded any sort of idea of long-term compatibility based on values, but you've just gone with the flow. And now you're at the point now where you knew that you were never going to pursue anything long-term with her, but you've wasted this person's time. And now you're now in a really, really delicate position where you probably should end the relationship for the sake of your own, you know, for your, and for the sake of your own happiness and for the sake of their own happiness. But that all could have been avoided if you avoided the mentality of going with the flow. Now, I actually don't have an issue with going with the flow if your intention isn't necessarily to, you know what, with going with the flow, there is no expectations, I think, right? But going with the flow, I think is it's fine when you're younger. I think it's fine if, you know, you don't really want marriage yet and you're just testing the waters. I actually don't have an issue with that. But it's, I think, disadvantageous for someone to go with the flow if they know what they want. Yeah, that's but, the thing. But they're just being seduced by, you know, you know, easy validation by a partner or, you know, the quick the access comfort. Of love. The comfort. Yeah, that's the thing. It's when you're it's when you know your values and you actually know what you're looking for long term. And and long term doesn't need to be marriage, but just in a long term partner. If you know what you're looking for and this person doesn't have that, that's okay that they don't have that. But gee, the worst thing you could do is lead them on and get in deeper because then you're just going to come across as really selfish in a way because you knew deep down that this person wasn't going to be a, a long-term prospect for you. Yeah, you. it's a hard one, but a lot of people nowadays will stay in relationships that should have ended four or five years ago. And it's because they don't have the courage to end it. They'd rather just stay in the comfortable place that they've known for so long rather than take the risk well, it's that region beta paradox, isn't it? It's not it's not bad enough for you to make a decision to leave and it's it's not it's not good enough for you to actively stay in it and be happy. You're stuck in that region beta. You're stuck in that zone where it's not incredible, but it's also not that bad. So mm. eh, I'm just gonna stay. Exactly. It's a dangerous zone to be in. But I guess if we were to sum up this episode and we were to ask one another, what's our thoughts? Should you date to marriage? My personal belief, number one, is ask yourself even if first and foremost, do you actually ever want to even get married? Because if the answer is yes, I subscribe to a similar belief to you, which is maybe when you're younger, figure out what you like first, figure out who you are first, develop your sense of independence what your values are, embody those values, especially if you want those values embodied by someone else. And then, you know, be selective and don't be afraid to showcase what you want on early on in the dating process. After all, after all you're not saying that it's going to be with them, but you're just saying what you're advertising for. What about you? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we mentioned age is a big factor when, when talking about this episode. And I think age is still very important. And I agree. I think when you're young and you're starting out and, you're just getting it, getting a feel for the world of dating. You're trying to understand women. You're trying to understand men, whatever it is. You're trying to understand how people communicate or how to communicate with another person. Don't be so hard on yourself and don't think that you need to only ask people out and approach people with the intention of getting married, with the intention of making them a long-term girlfriend. Between the ages of like 18, 21, 22, even older if it suits you, that's fine. But as long as you are always communicative about your intentions, that is the key part. If you know that you 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 want to have something one day, but right now you're just looking to get a feel of things and be a bit casual, that's okay. Just make sure you bloody communicate it so you don't land up in hot water down the line. I think it'll always be to your benefit to try and investigate what you truly want. What do you really, really want? And it doesn't have to be this 
big supreme noble thing because for you you might just be i want to be single and have short-term fun and in my opinion there is nothing wrong with someone wanting that especially if they're young because they might have their whole life to be in a long-term relationship maybe they want to try a different ice cream flavor before switching off to the pistachio right absolutely so i don't think there's anything wrong with that and i think everyone's got the free will to do that but again just know what you want absolutely on that note guys happy tuesday have a good week And we hope you enjoy this week's episode. Go South Melbourne.